Okay, uh, welcome to A Push Chapter 7, uh, Lecture Part 1. Uh, just look, want to look at the big picture here uh, of what this chapter is all about. Uh, it's about a political crisis uh, that follows after Washington's departure from uh, the presidency. It's about um, our westward movement uh, as we expand west across the continent. And it's about the War of 1812. These are the three big picture items that go along with this section. Um, the Federalists, remember, they support the Constitution. So in the first elections in 1788, the Federalists sweep this thing. Um, they hold almost all the important positions. Washington's elected as president, although he's not technically a Federalist. Um, he doesn't really have a party. Uh, he is elected president. He chooses this all-star cast, um, Jefferson, Hamilton, and Henry Knox as his cabinet members. Um, and it's as good as it gets as far as cabinets go. Uh, also during this time period you had the Judiciary Act of 1789 um, which created a national court system which basically creates the Supreme Court and knowing that the Supreme Court's job is to uh, judge the constitutionality of laws that are made by uh, Congress, by the legislation. The Bill of Rights which was a must as far as ratification of the Constitution goes uh, initially started off at 19 uh, bills, 19 amendments. It was whittled down to 10 that were finally uh, the Democrat Republicans say, yeah, these 10 will work. Um, we feel like this will keep the national government from being too powerful. Uh, so we will accept this new government, this constitution. What we have in America at this time period is, and right now, is something called a federalism. It is a shared power between states and the national government. And it's just kind of unique and it's kind of kind of interesting. But we managed to work both national and state together. Um, Alexander Hamilton is the Secretary of Treasury and it's his job to really get the country up and running. Uh, we've been struggling as all new countries will um, after freeing ourselves from Great Britain. How do we make this thing work? And Hamilton's got a plan. Now his financial program is fairly controversial um, but there are some things, it's very pro-British, it's modeled after the British uh, quite extensively. Uh, but he believes in national mercantilism, he wants America to sell more than it buys. Um, he also believed in government assisted economies. Um, healthy economies be good. If that takes a little bit of government money to do so, then we need to do that as an investment. Uh, he also sought to fix the nation's public credit. He felt like this was essential. If we don't pay back the people that we owe money to, then no one else will ever lend us money. And there are going to be time periods when we need uh, someone to, to borrow money from. Uh, so it was very important for him that uh, we fix public credit. Uh, he, this meant that he planned for a national debt, that he was okay with having a national debt, um, and that he wanted a national debt owned mostly by the wealthy people, uh, which was controversial. Um, because that gives wealthy people leverage. When you owe somebody money uh, and they want something to be done, then they have that leverage over you. And so it was very controversial. Uh, there was, was a time period where you had the speculation of war bonds. There were people that had bought continental money uh, in the time of the revolutionary period. And uh, he says we need to redeem those people. They, they supported us during uh, the revolution and they had money that had depreciated in value and so we need to pay them face value. And so there were some people that got wealthy off of uh, this speculation and again that, that angered some people. Um, so to get his plans passed uh, Hamilton had to basically compromise and he threw this kind of bone out to the Democrat Republicans and the Southerners who were mostly the ones who opposed his, his plans. Uh, he said we'll move the capital, new capital, from New York. We'll, we'll move it to um, the South. And so that's when they create Washington, D.C., uh, just outside of Maryland, uh, as a concession to get his plans passed. Okay. You understand that Alexander Hamilton and, and Thomas Jefferson are two very different people. They have two very different visions uh, for America's future. Uh, now, Hamilton's financial plans had actually split the Federalists along regional lines. There were your Northern Federalists and your Southern Federalists uh, because his plans kind of supported the North maybe a little bit more than it did the South. In the South, Federalists became Democrat Republicans. Uh, so the party splits from Federalists to Democrat Republicans. Uh, in the, uh, the Democrat Republicans are headed by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, both who will become president. Um, Thomas Jefferson envisions an agrarian society. Uh, to him, the farmer was a, a very noble person. And we would supply food to Europe, and in return, we would buy finished products from Europe. And that was kind of the model that, that was bouncing around in his head. 
uh, and he thought that that would make America great. And early on, I mean, it, it really seemed to work out because uh, because of war in Europe, wheat prices uh, quadrupled and people were getting wealthy off of wheat. Uh, uh, export of cotton was also big. <laughs> Eli Whitney's cotton gin made it where um, uh, cotton was a very profitable business and you, you saw an increase in slavery and an increase in um, cotton plantations down south. Uh, the French Revolution was another political crisis in Europe going on in this time period. It also divided Americans. Many Americans saw uh, the revolution as, you know, we owe the French, they helped us win ours. They're actually modeled after our revolution. They want the same things we want, life, liberty, uh, pursuit of happiness. They want those things too. Um, others said, yeah, but we didn't kill 40,000 people uh, by beheading them with a the guillotine. That the French Revolution was too radical and it kind of lost its own sense of itself. And so it divided Americans. Um, you have war going on between Britain and France. We want to be able to trade with both. Washington issues his uh, call of neutrality. Um, that's not really respected by either the, the British or the French, but especially the British because they had the, the superior navy. They were blockading and they would often seize goods that were meant for France and take them from our merchants. And eventually later on, as things got even worse, they would impress our soldiers, meaning they would take our, our sailors, they would take our merchants and force them to uh, fight in the British Navy, which obviously angered people very much. Um, so we sent John Jay on a diplomatic mission to Britain uh, to tell basically Britain, hey, stop doing this, but uh, that's not exactly what happened. John Jay comes back with a treaty that was so controversial it was barely passed, um, although it was ratified by the Congress. Um, in the treaty, what we won was British had to leave the West. They had to stop supplying Indians with weapons. They had to leave the West. Uh, but we had to end up paying back all the money that we owed for the Revolutionary War, and that was kind of what the British got out of uh, the treaty. Uh, as far as political parties go in this section, uh, the first party system, the, federal, the Federalist Party, uh, splits and it's against the Democrat Republicans. Uh, they split over Hamilton's financial plans again. The Federalists are, are mostly pro-British. Democrat Republicans are a little more uh, pro-France. Uh, you had John Adams that becomes president after uh, Tom, uh, after. George Washington, he's a Federalist, he's pro-British, he's an easily offended man, he, uh, he's offended in the XYZ affair, you know, where Britain, where France wanted a bribe for us to be able to talk to their leaders and whatnot. Um, so in response to the fact that he was so thin-skinned, he passed three coercive acts, the Alien Sedition Acts and the Naturalization Act. Uh, five to fourteen years to become a citizen. Alien Act, if you're a foreigner and he doesn't like you, or if you're a Democrat Republican, basically, uh, he can have you exported out of the country. And the Sedition Act was, if you were, you could not write publicly bad things about him and his government or he'd throw you in jail. Uh, the states didn't like this, they're basically going to end up throwing it out. Um, then the election of, of 1800 will leave off for another section.